Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here to recap the week number seven matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Houston Texans. Now, I went on vacation this weekend, in case you guys didn't know. You guys probably didn't even notice I didn't go live and I didn't uh, post a podcast, but I went on a little bit of a vacation. I came home uh, from said vacation, had the recording of the Jags game on. I was excited to watch. I sat down, played the recording, and holy shit show... The Jags might be bad once again. A lot of things happened, a lot of bad, not so much good. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to recap the third game in a row that the Jaguars have lost. The Jags fell to the Texans 20-7, to so let's not waste any more time. I'm Tree from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Houston Texans. Week number seven, recap, position grades, and players of the week. Now, before I go over the offense and the special teams, let's just talk about some trends that I noticed uh, throughout the game. First and foremost, it looks like absolutely no one is trying out there. Now, you have all these guys in the locker room right now, mostly on the defensive side of the ball. There was reports that Yannick and Gawkway had to be held back from a teammate in order not to have a physical altercation, and everybody was fired up in the Jags locker room after that defeat. Why are you guys so fired up if you guys are playing so bad? I don't understand. It's a mix. We ran a lot more man coverage this week than we have in previous weeks. We still mixed in some zone coverage there. But for the most part, it's just players not making plays. I remember uh, when the Jags were down 20-7. to It was a third down and five, third down and six, something like that. And we let Deshaun Watson scramble for a first down because two of our own guys ran into each other. And that is the most Jaguar thing I've ever seen. I thought we were over that time of our lives. I thought we were over that type of Jaguar football. But it just looks like no one out there is trying. And without, like, this, I hate to be a Gus Bradley of the bunch, but we are 3-4 and four correct. We're third place in the division correct But, this division is so bad, any of these teams can win or lose on any given week. We can't give up. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep pushing. There's still a possibility of making the playoffs, even though there are tons of controversy surrounding uh, this team. The offense was absolutely anemic. However, when Cody Kessler, who we'll get into in a little bit, came in, there was a little bit of a spark on this offense, but when Blake Bortles was out there, it was much of the same from previous weeks. Nothing was going on. Nothing was going right. Blake Bortles fumbled the ball two times on two running attempts, something he does not do uh, very often when he runs the football, but that ended up being the nail in his coffin, so to speak. And it just, it looks so anemic. None of these guys on the offensive side of the ball are doing anything in order for this team uh, to win football games. And just overall, shit needs to change. I'm not going to be surprised uh, this week if you hear about some blockbuster trades that the Jags are going to try and pull off. Whether that be for a quarterback position or receiver. Uh, We already did that for the running back offensive line especially. Uh, Don't be surprised if you see that. Because it's definitely, definitely possible. I've seen rumors all day that the Jags are trying to trade for Eli Manning and Derek Carr, which are two quarterbacks that I would not want to see the Jags pick up. I think Derek Carr would maybe fit this scheme a little a, a little bit, you know, a West Coast kind of dink and dunk offense. But his contract is just so massive, and I, the Jags don't want any part of that. So, <clears throat> like I said, shit needs to change, and just do not be surprised if there is some some moves to be made uh, within this week uh, and next week coming up. So just don't be surprised. So let's dive in first and foremost to these special teams, grades of special teams. Uh, Josh Lambeau wasn't on the field very much, get the extra point, and I uh, did that very, very good. You know, right through the uprights. Tremendous, tremendous job by Joshua Lambeau. The kicking gets an A for me because Josh Lambeau knocked down his only... Uh, feel extra point, but the one thing that I didn't understand is we were in a 54-yard field goal or so uh, attempt for Lambo, but we decided to punt it. I don't understand that coaching decision, but you know, again, that's not me. I would have had Josh Lambo try and kick the field goal. 
I know there, there was wind. There was some wind going on in the stadium, so maybe that had a factor to do with uh, the Jags not wanting to kick that field goal. But if I'm in that situation with Josh Lambeau as my kicker, I'm kicking that field goal. Now, Logan Cook is a hashtag bad punter. I, I've been saying franchise, but dude, that guy fucking couldn't even kick like a 40-yard punt. He had one good punt inside the Texans' one-yard line off of a lucky bounce. But for the most part, dude, he was just struggling out there. He did not look good. Um, yeah, just terrible, terrible punts all around. D.D. Westbrook did a good job in the return game. He got to return one punt, and he uh, he got down to about the 40-yard line. The, yeah, the yeah 40-yard line about. He had like a 30-yard return. It was a good one. And uh, DJ Chark, do you guys know what I'm talking about? When he muffed that fucking kick and then he just took it out of the end zone and got like five yards, but he also uh, laid a lick on somebody on the uh, kickoff on the punt team. So, I mean, cancels each other out, maybe, I don't know. Put us in bad field position, so probably not. But now let's talk about the offensive side of the ball, starting off with the offensive line, as we so often do. And they played terrible yet again. Now, in the first half, they kind of kept Blake Bortles upright for the most part. But when we needed him the most to just protect Cody Kessler and let him throw the ball, because he was throwing... Like I said, I'm going to get into it a little bit, but Cody Kessler didn't do too bad. When he had time to throw the ball, he did exactly what he needed to do, something that Blake Bortles has been struggling to do uh, all season long. So this offensive line needed to keep him up to make sure that he had time and make sure he had plays, you know, make plays. And the offensive line, they just didn't do that. So with that being said, this offensive line gets a D-plus from me. Uh, Like I said, they had a decent first half of the second half they just crumbled and that's why they got the plus because the first half was at least a little decent uh, as opposed to a d minus or a solid d but <laughs> solid d nice but you know that's just it was terrible terrible offensive line play from the jacksonville jaguars as we are so accustomed to uh these days with all these injuries Fuck. coming up next we got the running backs and I don't know what to grade the running backs. We barely ran the ball. We ran the ball 12 times with TJ Yeldon. And he racked up, I think, 26, 29 yards, which isn't that much. <laughs> That's not that much at all. And Blake Bortles was our leading rusher at the end of the game. Six rushes for 30 yards, but he had two fumbles. So, I mean, you know, and Blake Bortles isn't a running back. So, and Jamal Charles was nowhere to be seen, unheard of. And it just... Man, I hate to do this, but the running backs, man, we're going to give them a D as well. They just couldn't get anything going on the ground, uh, whether that be because we were down for most of the game or because, you know, we're just shot. We just shied away from it. The whole second half, we didn't run the ball, like, at all. T- uh, Cody Kessler came in, I think, with about six minutes left in the third quarter, and he had 31 attempts. We were throwing the ball on every single down and that's what the, okay I'll wait to talk about the quarterbacks there's a there's a lot that I want to say about the quarterbacks so be prepared because that might be a seven minute take so as a whole for the running backs we are going to be giving them a D I I just can't give them anything else you know they struggled today on the ground now let's talk about the wide receivers Dante Moncrief had a good game like I said every week anybody has the potential to lead uh, this team in receiving yards on any given week, and Dante Moncrief just so happened to be that guy this week. But there are a lot of problems as far as his wide receiver core goes. For the first part, TJ Yeldon was the second leading receiver who notched 40 yards receiving, and DD Westbrook was absolutely nowhere to be seen. Not used, not thrown to very much. I mean, he, may- he maybe caught a couple of passes, but nothing nothing big and the big problem is dropped balls we currently lead the league in drop passes with 15 now <clears throat> there's a lot of people on the internet right now saying that Blake Bortles isn't the issue which I could see it I could see it I could see what you're talking about because you know I used to be that guy too I used to just be defending Blake Bortles all the time but I've kind of turned a new leaf as the as the days kind of roll on but, you know, it's he, Blake Bortles has thrown the interceptions. And the drops are just on the receivers. Overall, we need better play from these wide receivers. Keelan Cole dropped two passes that were right in his hands. And ugh, terrible. TJ Yeldon, on a on the drive that we were driving, we were about at the 10-yard line to try and get our second touchdown with Cody Kessler at the helm. 
Tipped the ball, intercepted by Tyron Matthew. He holds on to that. The Jags might make it a seven-point game with about four minutes left to play with two timeouts. And that game is a totally different game. Momentum swing in Jacksonville's favor. But the drop pass costs us um, that opportunity. So, with that being said, the wide receivers are also going to be getting a D-plus rating from me. And I think that is fair. I think that's fair. The wide receivers did not play well today. Now let's go in and talk about the position that everybody wants to talk about, that I want to talk about. Let's talk about the quarterback position here. Blake Bortles, you get an F. You get an F. I don't think this is the final nail in Blake Bortles' coffin, however. I fully, 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 fully expect Blake Bortles to be the starting quarterback when we play in London. I don't think, I think Doug Marone benched him for the game to make a statement, like he said in his press conference, that, you know, we need to get a spark out of this team. Somebody needs to go out there and do their job and make sure that we're playing winning football. And Blake Bortles, he just ain't it, you know. He's thrown 75 interceptions in five years, which is a lot. <laughs> That's a lot in your first five years. It's the most ever, actually. And uh, fumbled the ball twice in, you know, this game. And he went like 6 for 12 didn't have a whole lot of yards and he just struggled all game long you know it did, like these last three games have really showed you the kind of quarterback that Blake Bortles is this year and the kind of quarterback that Blake Bortles uh is overall and I think that I've been blinded you know like I said Blake Bortles has been kind of a toxic girlfriend to me and I've been you know really trying to hope that he doesn't cheat on me anymore but he's been cheating on me and being bad and you know I just if this team had an elite quarterback to rally around, this would be a totally different season. But we signed Blake Bortles to the extension. I don't, you know, I would be surprised if the Jags traded for a quarterback. But I would not really be surprised if we end up trading Blake Bortles somewhere. I know that might be a hot take, but if we trade Blake to like a Bills team or something, like I would not be surprised and maybe roll with Cody Kessler. Um, but like I said, I also think that this is a, this was a move by Doug Marone. I think the whole other side of the front office really believes in Blake. Uh, that being, well, like the whole higher-ups, you know, Dave Codwell and Chad Kahn, they really believe in Blake Bortles. But, you know, Tom Coughlin, Doug Marone, who really run this football team, uh, it was evident as of last week that they really, really don't believe uh, in Blake Bortles. <clears throat> so that being said, Blake Bortles gets an F. But let's talk about the man of the hour, Cody Kessler. Uh, Cody Kessler, I believe, went 21 for 33, uh, one touchdown, one interception. Now, he came in there, and there was a spark in the offense, something that we were not used to seeing. He went out there after the scoring drive, went out there, yelled at the defense, got everybody pumped up. And, you know, the thing is, is that I know Cody Kessler is not a great quarterback by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. I completely understand uh, where people are coming from as far as saying that uh, it was kind of garbage time and the te Texans were playing zone defense and things like that. But there's a lot of simple things that he did well that Blake Bortles just couldn't do all season long. Like, he threw it onto the receiver. Uh, he only had to scramble out when he had to. Uh, and he gets the ball out so much quicker. His throwing motion, as opposed to Blake Bortles, is so much smoother. Uh, he gets the ball out of his hands quick, right into the receiver's hands right away. Uh, there's a couple of times where his release is a little high. Uh, I think that could be fixed, though. And I just, I really... I really want to see Cody Kessler get a fair go next week. I think that Cody Kessler should come out, be a starting quarterback when we head into Wembley, and see what he can do. Now, whatever Doug Marone's going to do is what he thinks it gives us the best chance of winning. I personally am not looking at the season right now as we're trying to tank and get a better draft pick. Like a lot of you are. I mean, I get that we're 3-4. and four. We have a losing record. And just 2017 was just a phenomenal year. And this year, we had so much false hope. And now we're getting let down like the Jags uh, used to do to us years and years ago. Not years and years ago. Like two years ago. <laughs> you know, like that's just how recent it was. And we would, tr you know, we would tank. We'd get all these draft picks. But I don't think we're trying to do that this year. I still think we're trying to make an effort to go to the playoffs. And I think that... Uh, Doug Marone is going to put the quarterback in there that will give us the best chance to make it to the playoffs. And whether he believes that's Cody Kessler or whether he believes it's Blake Bortles, I think that I would not be on board with starting Kessler at Wembley when we play the Eagles next week if he threw less attempts than he did. He threw 33 balls, uh, damn near threw every single play he was out there, 
And he completed a lot of passes, and he did a lot of good things well. He was sacked a couple of times. That was the offensive line's fault there. But, you know, he was able to put the ball in the receivers. He was able to throw uh, good balls. That a lot of people are talking about his arm strength, but, you know, that's just... That's not needed, really, in our offense. I think that's kind of what we... With Blake, we kind of changed the offense a little bit. We tried to... We tried too much to try and go deep and do, you know, silly things like that because Blake's arm strength was really good. But his accuracy is not that great. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Cody Kessler as a whole gets a B B+. Uh, the best grade on the offense. I think that he came out there... Uh, and, you know, if he was bad and if he wasn't ready to do it, he would have went out there and just completely browned it. You know, throw a pick, first attempt, you know, throw, you know, tons of overthrown balls, bad balls. But he didn't do that, you know. You know, he went out there and he threw some good balls and he did what he needed to do to uh, make this offense successful. So with that being said, Cody Kessler uh, gets the highest grade on this offense with a solid B. Now it's time for the offense's final grade and if you haven't guessed it yet we've given a lot of these grades out uh today it's a d this offense played awful again a low grade for this offense and it, it struggles to get off the ground we'll see where the jags decide to go at the quarterback position next week whether that be cody kessler or blake bortles we are not 100 percent sure yet but it's definitely going to be an interesting storyline heading forward into wembley now we're going to be talking about the defense, and the defense, boy, oh boy, y'all are in trouble. It was a mixture of bad play calls by Todd Walsh, but I don't think they were bad as they have been in recent weeks. I think he kind of listened to what we've been saying, and he kind of backed off on the zone defenses a little bit. But as far as players go, man, we cannot get off the field on a third down to save our lives. This is 2016 Jaguar football is what this is. The secondary gets a D. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, who I think did a good job on DeAndre Hopkins, but, you know, everybody on the internet, anytime a receiver catches the ball over the defensive back that, you know, likes to talk, are just like, oh, he got burned, oh my god. You know, that one-handed catch was just an incredible play by DeAndre Hopkins, there ain't no stopping that. And yeah, on the touchdown pass, DeAndre got the better end of Jalen Ramsey. With that being said, I no way, shape, or form did DeAndre Hopkins burn Jalen Ramsey. Those were... Uh, good coverages, but AJ Boye, man, like, what are you doing? Like, I don't understand who this guy is, man. You, like, I was heading into the season talking about how you're better than Jalen Ramsey and how you're probably the best corner in the league, but this year you sure as shit ain't showing it. Tyler Patman went down with an injury. Ronnie Harrison came in and played the nickel corner, and he filled in pretty good. I think that he should be uh, considerable, getting more considerable time at that uh, position, but as a whole for the secondary, a D. I don't think they did great. I think that, you know, Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins, man, they had a game. Both of them did. And Lamar Miller, oh my god, defensive line. Lamar Miller, who hasn't had a 100-yard game in, I think they said 10, 10 games, had a 100-yard game. This defensive line did really well to start off. Yannick Ngakwe had seven QB pressures to start the game. But after that, we just couldn't do anything. Like, we could not get off this offensive line. Deshaun Watson had all day to throw. The run game was just terribly, terribly good. And we were just getting tore up by Alfred Blue and Lamar Miller all game long. And it just it's just amazing to me that, like, all these talented guys, like, it just, they're out there looking like they're giving up. Like, they're not giving their 100% effort. Like, it's just, you know that these guys are better than the way they're playing and it's just disgusting to watch because they're just playing at such a low level they're playing down to their competition every single week i truly believe this defense is still elite but they are just playing down to the level of their opponent man we have been shut out in the first quarter in three consecutive games think about that hey it was first half first half of three consecutive games think about that what are we doing wrong on defense and what are we doing wrong on offense with the talent that we have this is basically almost the same exact team from last year and it's and with some key additions and I understand there's an injury injuries on the offense but what's the excuse for the defense again this is basically the same exact team from last year and I don't think Aaron Colvin though he was a great player made that much of a difference on this defense that we are playing like this like, I'm not even, uh, like, the Cowboys game, y'all had me ranting and raving, but this time I'm just kind of like, 
why? Like, what is going on? Like, what is different? What is different with this defense that you guys are just playing like this? It's not you guys, you know? It's like, it's almost like you guys aren't even the same players. But the defensive line as a whole, we're going to be giving them a uh, C-. minus. I think that, like I said, the first half they went out and they played well. But in the second half, like I said, shit down their leg. And okay, okay, okay. Let me talk about this real quick. Quit playing Calais Campbell hurt. Like, he's getting hurt, and he's getting banged up so bad. If he's not 100%, let him rest a week. Especially now that we're 3 and 4. Like, just let him, let him fucking sit back and relax for a little bit. Let him fucking enjoy the sights of London. Let him, let him just, let him sit out, okay? Just let him chill out, calm down, get healthy, maybe a week or two, and then he can come back onto the field. Because he keeps playing with these nagging injuries, man. But it shows the heart of the guy. But we still should not be playing him if he just if he continuously you know gets a little bit more banged up. Do you want another guy on the IR, especially like a Calais Campbell? No, you don't. So you can't let that happen. <sighs> the linebackers, the linebackers, the linebackers. I still think Miles Jack is a great player. I think that he's going out there and he's doing good things. So Miles Jack, I'm sorry, but you know the linebackers they get a D because what the hell, Telvin Smith? Where? What? Like, why? It's just like, these aren't the same fucking players, man. Telvin Smith is struggling, and he's struggled all season long. You're supposed to be E-L-I-T-E, -E, but you're fucking N-O-T. Like, what is going on? Why are you playing like this? Pass coverage is bad. People are breaking through his tackles. These linebackers, man, are Telvin just in general, bro. What are you guys doing? You guys have to get better. Have to get better. Now for the defense's final grade. The defense also gets a D. This defense played awful. This offense played awful. They couldn't get off the field on third downs, whether that be third down and nine or third down and four. They just could not do it. Couldn't do it. That's just the way she goes. And just the players in general did not have a great day. We keep playing Calais Campbell hurt. Yannick Ngakwe is going after players, you know, in the locker room. You know, it's just this whole organization right now is in complete and utter shambles. Now it is time for my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, and everybody's favorite time of the week. We are going to be giving out players of the week the third week in a row that we are giving out players of the week in a week that we lost. And now let's give out the special teams player of the week. And I'm going to have a little fun with it. I understand that, you know, he had that muff punt and it was like a five-yard uh, return. But DJ Chark, man, he laid the lick on somebody. So, you know, and he's my boy. So, you know, I'm going to give him every shout-out and every opportunity I can. So, DJ Chark, congratulations. Special teams player of the week. Um, he also had a decent game uh, as a receiver as well. Every time he would uh, – we threw the ball to him a couple times on like a screen play, a little smoke screen. And it's just, it's bad because I just cringe because I'm like, he's going to fumble it. He's going to fumble it. He's such a skinny dude. Like, he, he just goes out there. I'm like, oh, dude, this boy's like stick, skin and bones, dude. He's going to get lit up and get hurt. But uh, he held the zone out there, did a very good job. And as far as defense goes, uh, we're going to give it to Yannick Ngakwe. Yannick Ngakwe's uh, second week of winning defensive player of the week. Uh, he didn't, did he get a sack? I can't remember if he got a sack. Uh, but he had seven QB pressures in the first half. He was getting after it. He was doing his thing. And I think, uh, without a doubt, definitely out of the struggling defense, I think deserved it the most. So Yannick Ngakwe, congratulations. You are Trebes Defensive Player of the Week, which is the highest honor amongst the NFL. Now about the offense. I never in my life thought I'd say this this year. But Cody Kessler, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, we're going to give it to Cody Kessler. Cody Kessler, like I said, went out there in a hostile environment with all these fans, you know, glaring at you, doing that. And, you know, throwing the ball 33 times, completing 21 passes, that's not bad. That's pretty good. And then, you know, he was taking us on a second, you know, touchdown. He was leading us on a second touchdown drive. But, unfortunately, TJ Yeldon had to tip that pass and then it ended up getting uh, intercepted. But... He would have had two touchdown passes, and I still think he had a good game, and I still think the Jags should give him a fair shot next week against the Eagles. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Houston Texans week number seven recap, position grades, and players of the week. 
What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Trave Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. And if you are feeling generous, don't forget you can donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Trebe Talks. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.